those kind of people are really dumb. <laughs> Well, I mean, obviously, if you take a look at a, a society like Germany, which had obviously no culture or opera or anything else like that, uh, take it back to America, though. Freedom of assembly. When's the last time that you went? Do you, you want to go have a, a political group assemble somewhere? You want to go have a meeting? You don't get your permit? Get a permit. If you don't get your permit in the right place, are you going to get shut down or not? Just ask yourself that question. Yeah. Well, even if, even if you don't get shut down, you're in violation of the Patriot Act. Okay. Let's say uh, you go out and you, it's still on the First Amendment. Let's say you go out and you you start a religion that uh, authorizes you to partake in particular substances that say uh, other people don't agree with, like peyote. Right. Or you put too much salt on your food in New York City as a business owner. Yeah. Or you have too much uh, fat substance in your food. That's. I mean, the food police are on the march, man. They've already passed that law last year, de- deciding on what you can and can't grow. And if you do grow something in your garden, you can't give it to your neighbor because you're violating you're violating the state. Well, that is actually a law now. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. You plant something in your garden, give it to your neighbor. That's against the law because it's not regulated, and the FDA doesn't know what that food is, or well, what you did to cultivate it. I, I will proudly announce that I am a lawbreaker because I believe that that law is an unjust law, and therefore I am not bound by God to obey that law. Well, I am going to follow those ads and turn you in, because I see something wrong. Well, if you see something, say something. Hey, how about, hey, do you see this? (laughs) (laughs) You want to turn me in for that? (laughs) All right. Uh, Okay. Good thing we're not on TV. Yeah, exactly. What's the, okay, Second Amendment, keeping bare arms, well, which arms? Are are they let you have? Okay, What what if you want to keep and bear a bazooka? I think it's great. No, right. what, what does the government say about that? No. Well, as long as you have the right permit, right? Yeah, do you can. There, there's pretty much any gun that you can get, right, Aaron? As long as you you fill out the right paperwork and uh, no, qualify. That's, that's not 100 percent true, but there is quite a few things you can own if you have the right paperwork and are willing to pay the outrageous amounts of money for them. But there are certain ones that you still cannot. <laughs> well, sure. Okay. Why? Why? Does that does that not infringe on my right to keep and bear arms? I do, do, am I reading the Constitution wrong? Does it say that, that the right of people to keep and bear arms for hunting should not be infringed? The fact that you read it at all should tell you that you're a nut job. Well, and you know what? I, I, the FBI issued a, a warning that people that are that talk about the Constitution may in fact be terrorists. Yes, yeah, they did. that was Turn actually that was like four years ago. Yeah, right, three so. years ago. We we're, we're, well, we're well down this road. I mean, there's no question about that. Well, the okay. last thing that they issued, they mentioned it again. Okay. Fourth Fourth Amendment. Let's take that for just a moment. Reasonable search and seizure. Trash. Nope. Okay. okay. That guy you, in Arizona learned that one. You, you walk out. <laughs> no, right here in Fairbanks, Alaska. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, right here in Fairbanks, Alaska, you go for a drive <laughs> at 3 in the morning, and the cop sees you driving. No. But what's he, what's he going to look for to be able to pull you over? What does it take? You driving? Well, yeah, I mean, it really it really doesn't take much at all. I mean, I I, I have been obviously I, I go to work at three in the morning, right? So I use that as an example, and I have been pulled over for uh, driving too close to the center line. I have been <laughs> for making too wide of a turn. I have been pulled over for. Um, well, I don't think I've actually been pulled over for any, any actual traffic infractions. Uh, in one particular case, I was followed for three miles. I saw, I didn't see, I, I only saw headlights behind me, and I saw that I was being followed. So I began, so I began to take more turns and just kept on getting followed for about uh, two miles. I actually then finally turned around and doubled back on him, and that's when he pulled me over because I doubled back on him, and I was like, oh, <laughs> good morning, officer. Uh, all right. So let's say, let's say you don't have the right papers in effect when you have to present them to the police officer. Isn't that the Eleventh Amendment? Well, I mean, it's still the the no. I, the, I'm still in the Fourth Amendment. The whole unreasonable searches and seizures to be to get secure in my papers and effects. Oh, I thought maybe there was one that said that you said that you said the effects Rex Rex from over. Now that's the eleven, right? <laughs> <laughs> or is that the uh, two thousand and eleventh? I you, you know what? Well, all the stuff, all, all none of this stuff has ever been amended to the Constitution. I mean, yeah, the the, the Ten Amendments, those are all there. Right, and they're all completely ignored, and all the laws that uh, that thwart them are not amendments. 
and uh, there's, there may be a reason for that. I mean, I would I would say, hey, if you're going to have this police state, at least amend the Constitution to do it, but I'm afraid they actually would. And I'm yeah. afraid that they would get it through. No, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that there are enough people that would say, you know what, that is a really, really good idea. Right. I, mean, I, I think that would happen. Obviously, we've got uh, people out there in uh, in the Congress we who are more than willing to get rid of all of our all of our rights because, of course, we don't really have rights because we are wards of the state. You know, one of the things that I, I've been chewed on quite a bit this week is from the, this even mentioning the fact that the PFD, the Permanent Fund Dividend, in that program is an entitlement. Mm-hmm. Because certain people have this this concept that an entitlement program is only things like welfare. But in, in fact, an entitlement, by the definition, it's something that you get without earning. That you, And, you know, whether it's, you know, a, a settlement from a lawsuit, it then becomes an entitlement. Whether it is your daddy left you a bunch of money. And as a little rich kid, you're entitled to something. What do we do in in Alaska to get the permanent fund? We steal from the largest jobs producing sector, and then we redistribute it to all the people who don't work for those companies. Oh, oh! Why don't you shut up, Dave? <laughs> you are such a troublemaker. I, I I thought that this was our money that we were due. Right. That, that which then, by very definition, is an entire. Enti- and yet, that, how many people, if we got rid of the permanent fund, if it just went away, would not only, um, not only be upset, but actually feel the pain, because they are, they need that money to be able to pay their their heating bill. So how many more jobs would you have in the state if you cut the the oil tax by a whole bunch of money? Right. I mean, look what's going on in the the Bakken oil field in North Dakota and Canada down there. It's going crazy. And in Canada, it's really easy to get permits to drill. And in North Dakota, the land's privately owned instead of leased from the state. And so people can, people can like farmers can lease out their, their fields and just get the money directly. And guess what? People are leaving Alaska in droves going to the Dakotas. That, yeah, people don't even know that, but people are really leaving Alaska to go to North Dakota. We know all kinds of them. You, you're you're a little bit away from the microphone, Aaron, so I'm not sure everybody heard what you said. People are leaving Alaska. People to go are to North- leaving Alaska and going to North Dakota. I've met all kinds of people that are heading down there. Talked to two more yesterday, myself. I'm getting ready to rent a place uh, here in a couple of days. That same kind of deal. The so, guy's leaving to go to North Dakota. Exactly. Yep. So they're going to North Dakota because there's more freedom. Or because there's more because money? Because there is deregulation there, and so everybody's making money. Uh, right. Wow. All right. Well, you know, it's not all about money. Yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 458-TALK is the number of you like to call in and participate in the show today. You can also join us in the chat room at KFAR660.com. Patriots Lament is the name of the show. And, uh, Dave, what's the... the G, um, the Gmail address? For oh, people Patri- to... PatriotsLament at gmail.com is the email. PatriotsLament at gmail.com. And yeah. if folks want to look up the blog? The blog is PatriotsLament.blogspot.com. All right, check it out. And we also have a YouTube channel as well. Yep, it's um, Radio Free Fairbanks is the YouTube channel. Back after the news. Fox News at 660 a.m. You can hear the difference. Fox News Radio, I'm Karen Regal. Three people are dead in North Carolina because of Hurricane Irene, and hundreds of thousands are without power. We've had these bands of very intense uh, thunderstorms on the west side of the storm, uh, piling up as much as a foot of rain in the last 24 hours, which has been all along one of our big concerns of the storm. And we're probably getting, still getting some storm surge here in Pamlico Sound, now starting to worry as it goes further north. Bill Reed with the National Hurricane Center. Irene is expected to creep all the way up to northern New England and Canada. Parts of New York City were evacuated, even though the subway was closed. Uh, I'm on a bike. I got no choice, but we have to leave my bike. Irene is currently packing 85 mile an hour maximum sustained winds. A senior Obama administration official says al-Qaeda's second-in-command, who happens to be a Libyan national, has been killed. That happened in Pakistan. Fox News, we report you decide. We report it, you respond to it. Fairbanks is listening. This is Local Talk Radio, 660 
Welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR Local Talk Radio. Joining us in the studio from uh, the Fairbanks Campaign for Liberty, it's uh, Dave Giesel. Also next to him is Aaron Bennett from the store Far North Tentacle here in Fairbanks over at corner of 8th and Lacey, where you can get, uh, well, guns, also firearms accessories, and uh, everything that you need to basically protect yourself and your family from whatever kind of threat may uh, present itself. Aaron? You can get those things from Dave, too, in the back room. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, we got Josh Bennett from uh, Big Horn Enterprises. Uh, something happened here during the break, gentlemen. All of a sudden, all four lines just went blink. We've got all four lines on hold. So. Did you say something, Dave? <laughs> uh, not sure. You know, Maybe I might all have... the jobs are leaving Alaska because we have too many regulations. It's everybody on the Alcan. Uh, no, I think you better go to them before their phones drop. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we said something about the permanent fund being uh, oh, yeah, entitlement. Yeah, or or, or that we mentioned real. that it might go away. Either way, 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Bill. Hey, Bill. What you got today? I got this. Uh... Uh, I got two things. Uh, uh, the permanent fund. I believe that Alaska. My time is worth money. All right, just like your time is worth money. And for me being in Alaska, they're paying me my time to be in Alaska. That's what I consider the dividend. Is that they're paying me to be in Alaska? And you know, uh, it's like getting a paycheck. Okay. So uh, just because my time is valuable, Alaska is paying me to be here. Yeah, but who is who is uh, you say you say Alaska is paying you to be here, but who is Alaska? Well, whatever you know. No, what no, 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 not not whatever, not time. whatever. No, no, let's chase it down. Let's chase it down, just for the sake of intellectual honesty. Who is Alaska? Well, the. Uh, <laughs> Right. It's, so state. maybe the state, right? So where the state doesn't do anything, they don't make anything. So where where do they get that money from? They get it from the royalties, from the oil. All right. So where do oil royalties come from? Somebody has to pay those. Under the ground. Uh, there's not dollar bills under the ground. They have to come from someone's pocket, right? So whose pocket? Whose pocket do they come from? We don't pump it out. Uh, absolutely, right? We don't pump it out. So somebody bears the risk of running a an operation and the liability, right? And right. they operate in a very harsh environment, and they're you know the biggest non-government employer in the state. And so why would you want to penalize somebody for being the largest non-government employer? Because non-government employers, by definition, are the only ones who bring revenue in. Government employers just spread money around that's already in. Well, it's the only product we got that we don't give away. Why you want to keep giving it to somebody else? Well, no, no, it's not. Gi- it's not. Enough. It's not given to anybody, right? It's sold at a. It's sold at a market price, and then the employees are paid out of the okay, profits. Okay, well, from we should get a dividend for gold. We should get. Whoa, 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 whoa! Silver we, and all but, the rest of but it. who's? But now that comes out of the the pocket of whoever bears the risk to go and get that, right? If if somebody does a an exploration field or whatever, right? They they spend a, a billion dollars exploring some field. And they set up there, and there's no oil. Does yeah, the state? Does the state? Contract. Does the state go? Oh, yeah. hey, you you bore all we this risk. You, that you bore all this risk, and you didn't get the profits out of it. And so instead of taxing you on the profits that you would have gotten, we're going to pay you for the profits that you didn't get but expected to. Right? The state doesn't bear any of the risk. We don't. But the, that's part of the contract. But, right, they and that's and, to the right, contract, and that's so therefore they're paying. And that's why they're leaving. <laughs> That's why they're leaving. That's why that that pipe is going to be empty in eight to ten years. It will be shut down. And I got I got it one more thing. 